2016 regular session. Any additions or corrections? There's one word. On public hearing, I put owed instead of own. <laughs> Spelling error in the farm lease public hearing. Yeah. Any more? Motion to accept the minutes of the regular session 11 16 16. Second. The motion is second to accept the minutes for November 16, 2016. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Citizens input. I just have a quick reminder. We still need our street sign put up on the street, Marshall Street. Or not Marshall. Oh, uh, Heritage. Heritage. Yeah, they were going to get it put up, but they haven't yet, so. Is that so if you come home late and you're in? Yep. <laughs> well, the <laughs> FedEx man came down the street and he didn't know where he was at, so. <laughs> Citizens input. Okay, yes, you need to, to talk. Need to talk about or talk. No, I mean we're just uh, trying to get more involved and in trying to show up to more of these meetings, trying to get people our age to show up and get more involved. So um, we're here just to, to listen and see uh, what's on the agenda. So did you pick one up at the door, or was there any out there? I told them. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming. You have some? Yeah, uh, I had a couple things. Um, I'd heard rumor from Town of Rochester, it's not really a rumor, but I know out in Illinois you're having problems with uh, taxes are too high. They got a lot of small business that's looking to move to a place with a little less taxes and they've been leaving in groves. And I know uh, Mayor Ted Denton sent out about six, seven hundred letters, whether they're paper or email, to the small towns and these little, uh, well, not to the towns, it's true businesses and trying to rope some in, and I guess they've got a few of them coming. And I was just thinking, I was like, well, shoot, no more uh, difficult than that was. Maybe that's something might uh, be interested in looking into. You know, if you can get a couple of them to come in and uh, discuss whatever, you know, you had 30, 40 jobs in this town, or shoot, even 10, that's, that's a substantial amount to start out with, uh, you know. So uh, I, I heard about that, and I was like, well, that ain't a too terrible idea. I just want to bring that up to everybody's attention, and maybe there's something to check into, maybe not. But uh, another thing uh, I'd want to bring up is, for future reference, uh, something along the uh, lines of advertising. Let's say you drive up and down 31, which is kind of the main uh, heartbeat here in Indiana, especially for this town. But it seems like, uh, for the most part, they come in because they see McDonald's and they stop at the BP. I was wondering if maybe something ought to be looked into as to Maybe we're at a billboard just uh, south of Rochester, maybe uh, north of Plymouth or something like that. Put a sign up and say, this is Argus. List what we have to offer. Add that hometown touch to it or whichever connotation you want to put to it. But maybe a little bit of money uh, set in some investing would show and try to bring people in. If we bring people in, it will help business. You know, part of being an entrepreneur is you see a need, you fill a need. And if there's no need, they don't fill it. No jobs are created. So if you can see, you got a bunch of people coming in town. We're packing the restaurants here, and they're just full. You know, then someone says, "Well, it's time for me to start up a restaurant." And they'll be looking to uh, either one of the buildings here on Main Street or something around, open a restaurant or anything of the nature. So you know, it'd funnel more people in, uh, check out the shops and things, and and hopefully boost a little bit of sales. But if we check into something. I mean, if you ever listen to B100, they've got Michigan. Uh, they put out an ad over the, the radio, and it's Tim Allen's doing it, and it's just so he paints Michigan get a piece of gorgeous. You just want to pack your bags and leave, you know. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not saying that Tim Allen's in our budget, but maybe something <laughs> to that would be helpful or beneficial. Just food for thought, something to chew on. But I've had a couple people interested in, in my uh, my storage front right now, but uh, the big thing for them is they've been food based. And they're like, I don't know if just the townspeople would be enough to 
have myself work there and have other employees. Like, well, I understand that. And they had brought up to my attention, like, there's no advertising. It's like, I see that, you know, I, I understand. And maybe if we could kind of mull it over and think something towards that, maybe it would help. We have talked about more signage right here. Yeah. Get your idea of billboards out of the way. That's yeah, because the sign up front would be great to just show passerbys, but you know, if you're coming from uh, if you're coming from Indy or Kokomo and you're going to South Bend or whatever, if you get before Rochester, get the signs they see in their heads, they'll skip Rochester and come here. Like the one of them, they've got ice cream and sandwiches and burgers and you know things of that nature, and they got arcade games, and they're free. So you got kids and you're traveling through town, you get to Rochester, everybody's got a Burger King, but if you can, yet again, sell an experience, and you can get the kids out of the car, they can go play some video games and calm down video games, but arcade games and calm down, or get crazy, whichever, and eat some food and then get back on the road, you know, that's different. And people look for that over Burger, at least I do, I look for that over Burger King or McDonald's any day. So maybe something before our bigger towns where people will pull off and eat before they come by here, maybe that would be uh, something to look at. Well, I stop before something. I think the, uh, our planning commission has been discussing putting a, a nice big sign, not the fanciest Plymouth, because that's they, they are they are talking about that. But yeah, you're right. I mean, it's been brought up, and uh, some of these other committees, uh, yeah, this said, oversight and stuff, they're they're working on these things. So yeah. yeah. Well, I say I know I knew about the sign because we talked about that in the springtime a little bit before then. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of was thinking one day and was like, well, the sign here's great. But we ought to think about something further right. to get the passerbys yeah. to, to see us and think about us when they come. Certificates uh, regarding compliance with the FISM statutes. Um, this is kind of one of these once a year things that uh, all of you guys have to sign, and then that all gets delivered to the executive of the town. That's you, Dustin. So, yes, you could sign one too. Um, then that gets back to Dustin. It's just got to be done before the end of the year. Can you get that one to Julie? Uh -huh. And that's what I had on that end of things. The other issue was this uh, letter to the Speedway folks. Um, I sent out a revised version of that. Um, it needs to be basically, I need to go ahead or I need the council to approve or okay or tell me to send the letter out to the scene. But um, what do you want to do with it? Our date was, we talked about this a little bit in our, in our workshop, but um, are you looking at March, April, 
I mean, looking at the first quarter of next year or? We're hoping the first quarter, but we have to sit down and, and write up a plan first. Right, we can yeah. establish a plan. We have, this is, that's one of those public works statutes. Uh, we've got to comply with that, which just means we've got to get, we've got to put together the plans and the specifications. That doesn't have to be some, you know, 30 page outline or anything, but it, it does have to be something so that when that's advertised, or I think, I don't even think that one's being advertised. I'm working from memory now. I think we just have to invite quotes from three different contractors, but we have to send them that invitation to bid. Um, and so we have to have those, those specs ready to go because other people can bid as well. Um, but we've got to have that prepared and, and, and ready to go. So should we not be getting bids yet then until that's done? Or? <laughs> we, have, we have to send those out so that they know that when they bid it, it okay. when they tear it down, it's got to be done in so many days. There's some time requirements. So, okay. and, and that yeah. could be part of it too. That, you know, what George is saying, that could be part of the specs. Okay, when you start work, we want it done within 30 days. Or Okay. The ground will be put back the way we want it, whether it's limestone, sand, uh, right. yeah. grass, or whatever. Okay, so, so as soon as we get that done, which will probably be, I'm guessing it'll be the month of January when we get around to getting that done. Yeah. Well, I mean, like I said, I'm, I'm getting quotes now, but should I hold off on that, or should I, 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 what do you want me to do? I would probably hold off till they get that bed sheet, because they could throw in a okay. bed, and then we throw it and we want to put down the gravel base or whatever, or asphalt or whatever, yeah. then they're going to come in and say, oh, well, that wasn't in a bed. Okay. Uh, the other thing that was brought up to me with the library is um, most of these contracts, before they can tear it down, they have to have an asbestos check. So that's something else I'll have to do. So I contacted somebody they were supposed to come down this Friday to look at it, but I'll hold up on that too. Unless you want me to go ahead and just go ahead and get it done. That wouldn't have a problem with you or not with Derek or should we have? No, that may be good to know just so you get an accurate bid and an accurate quote from them. You hate to yeah. have them bid it at one number and then they turn around and say, well, there's asbestos, so okay. you're stuck with us and that raises the price by 80000 <laughs> um, Okay. I'll I, I mean, I'm not really yeah. the one to call the shots, but it would... Yeah seemed to me that it would be good to know if right. that was going to be something they're going to run into regardless of the contract. If, if, if he gets down here and gets to it, it seemed like we should have that before the end of the year. So before you get started with yours, you'll have that information. Okay. Um, everything is in your package. You should have the uh, reimbursement for Harry schooling. I don't know if you got a chance to look at that or not. Okay. Was that in there? No. Oh. I, did. I thought you said just to give it to him. I, I broke it down to the three years and uh, just put all the dollar amounts on it. So I thought I had. Well, we can talk about that the next time if I don't have it right here. It's pretty much what we talked about before, it just has all the numbers on it, so. We have to accept that as a legal document, do we? I, I've seen it before, and I met with Jamie, and I've seen it, and talked to Jamie about it, and we kind of decided that it would just be best to have um, this part sign that, mm -hmm. um, just to acknowledge and recognize that he was going to be bound by this as opposed to what he'd signed earlier, but it was all subject to the council's approval. So I, I think you really just ought to voice vote and, and approve that. Make a motion that we accept the payback schedule for Harrison Barton schooling. 
second. Got a motion and a second to accept the payback schedule for Harrison Parton's schooling. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Let me just say one more thing. We took uh, applications. Uh, we interviewed for the general labor position, and uh, I recommend that we hire Mike Fishburn. Do we allow Jamie to hire Mike Fishburn full time? Second. The motion is second to hire Mike Fishburn full time to allow Jamie to hire Mike Fishburn full time. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> That's all I have. All right, thanks. That's his copy. Bill, Bill, I will file this personnel record. I have one in there already. Lisa? You got one, Lisa? I have one in there already. What? And his personnel file a copy of that. And oh, yeah. Here's mm -hmm. Derek will probably need one. This town file. <laughs> Any other old business? I have one thing. Um, while we're talking about employees, I need permission to run an ad or hire a service for cleaning for the EMS and possibly the BNR. I thought I could get maybe um, some of the groups that use the BNR for free to help in cleaning, but that doesn't seem to be. I mean, um, real services, I talked to the head of real services and she was like, we do clean it, you know, and I said, well, we only need somebody to kind of deep clean it once a month, you know, make sure it's dusted and really done right. And she said that she would help. Um, we are re-looking at the contracts for some of, you know, the BNR is something we're going to have to address at the first of the year. <coughs> but we only need somebody one day a month in the BNR. Susan will still go over and do like BNR checks after parties and stuff. <coughs> and I will pay her a couple of hours a month for that. Um, and then um, I found somebody that's willing to clean all the windows inside and out for this building, the EMS building, and the BNR. And he was very reasonable because, um, and he'll do it three times a year. But I'm still looking at, Corey's gonna clean his own office, Richie's gonna clean his own office. I'm looking at somebody just to clean the council room in the EMS building, and the foyer, and the bathroom. So you just need to put this in the paper, is that what you're... Well, I either need to hire a service or I need to put it in the paper and hire an individual. Or we do it ourselves, like we should have been doing it the last or two years. Or you can make that ruling, right. but then you have to... We just it. said Richie's going to take care of his, right? I didn't say that. <laughs> should no. Did you say Richie was going to take Richie's care of his office? Richie's going to take care of his office. And you're going to take care of your office. You can clean the toilets. Um, <laughs> it'll work. George can clean We have a cleaning lady for here, but we need somebody to take over for Susan. Um, and then carpet cleaning, I think that we should just hire a service twice a year or, you know, whenever that they need it. But so we're really only looking at a cleaning lady for maybe the BNR once a month and the EMS. Is that weekly? Um, the council room and all of that only gets cleaned every other week. Um, Corey's office gets cleaned weekly. Well, Corey's area. I would say, not as necessarily as often. Yeah. Thoughts? <laughs> I don't know how this works. I had an idea. Uh, would a high school student be able to do that? I think it would have to be somebody 
that is not a minor only because if they were to take anything, not saying they would, okay. or if, you know, Corey's got some confidential files laying on the desk or something, it has to be something that you can. I would love to do that because then high schoolers could, I could probably get the seniors to do it all year long, you know what I mean, for their, for their community service, but do you think that's an issue? I don't know the community service would be great having them in the in this right. building, yeah. So. Is that something you need somebody that was insured in case they pop over a computer and break it or something? You need somebody that um, was actually, yeah. Insured. Insured or bonded, you know what I mean? Somebody that. So you want to put an ad in them or you just want to go ahead and contact a service? Well, I was kind of leaving it up to you guys. So the only thing you'd be cleaning would be the conference room over there in the bathrooms? Yeah. And the foyer. And the foyer. And the BNR. And the BNR then once a month. But the problem is, is that, you know, you're talking sensitive areas with the police department and stuff, so. That's where a service is going to be licensed. Check on It prices. just might be yeah. more expensive than just, what we're paying yeah, now. Yeah, check on check prices. On prices. Okay. I'm just. Maybe we can hire a crossing guard or something. <laughs> I'll let you take care of that, George. Uh, <laughs> it just seems funny that we hire people to, to clean up our own trash and stuff. It just slays me. Is that too weird? No, it just yeah, slays me. So, contact the service? Get some prices. Yeah. Any other old business? Yeah, that's, I'd like to speak if I could, because George brought it up at the last meeting. Um, the fire department, George touched on a little bit, I guess, at the last meeting, I wasn't here. But the fire department's looking at a little project here that we're going to need some uh, help with funding on. What it boils down to is, in recent years, the research has gone from firefighters dying from um, cardiac arrest to cancer is killing more of us. So, We've talked about several years getting into doing some multi-gas detecting of fire scenes to draw a line in the sand of where you have to have all your personal protective gear on, your air on, and where you can take it off. And so we're looking at buying some multi-gas detectors, which I'm not going to delay you with all the uh, numbers and things like that of how they work or anything like that, but there'll be a four-function test. They'll test for lower explosive limits. Um, oxygen level, carbon monoxide, and HCN, which is hydrogen cyanide. And what we'll use them for is around perimeter of fire to determine where we can go without air and where we need our personal protective gear. <clears throat> We're looking to get two of them, one for each of the first out engines. Um, the price is going to be approximately $1,700 for two of them, and that will come with the calibration gas the bump gas they call it, call it, because every now and then you've got to check them to make sure they work. So you, every two years you buy a bottle of gas that will take care of that. We'll be able to train our people in-house to do that to make sure they're going to work. The other part of the project is, is our gear. Our gear is very expensive. It's $1,200 a set. And we have no good way to clean it. So what we're looking at is purchasing a washer extractor, specifically designed as commercial grade washer extractor to run the turnout gear through and clean. And possibly a dryer to dry it because you're only supposed to use warm air. So the dryer thing is, is something that I've been talking to the companies about and they're supposed to be getting back to me. If we can set it for a certain temperature so that no, we'll not go over that temperature, then yeah, dryer would be great because if not, you're going to leave this gear set for three days to air dry before you can put it back in service. So once your gear is contaminated and you clean it, you're not going to be able to go on a call for three, three days until it's dry so that you can use it again. So that's why we're kind of looking at a dryer. What the fire department has proposed is we have, uh, we'll come up with 5% of the money and we're going to look at writing a grant 
after the first year to help pay for this. What we'd like from the council is to commit to 5%, because when you write grants, you're better off to show you have vested interests. So we're going to look at putting up 10% of the money from the town and the volunteers to go towards this grant, to work on getting a grant to pay for this. I don't have hard numbers right now. I just talked to another company today for uh, 45 minutes on the phone about washer and dryers, washer extractors. I don't want to get confused. There's, there's a difference here. But washer extractors and a dryer. And the outside 5% you could have by putting these two projects together, I am going to say it's going to be about $900 is what the town would need to come up with. Uh, Mark and I talked the other night about it a little bit. We thought that if we took the 5% out of the budget next year um, and watched our capital spending, because it's not in a line item thing, watch our capital spending, and towards the end of the year, if we did need that $900 back, we'd have to do an additional appropriation to make up the slack, which we don't want to do, we don't anticipate doing, but it's just the funding part of it, I'll leave it up to you guys to decide how you, if you want to, do the 5% to go along with this grant, and if, if you know, or you want to come up with money, if you want to do something like that, or if you want to do it a different way, that's that's entirely up to the council. So, um, what one of the things I noticed on George's little list about the building is tearing out the wall over there in the, in the uh, bay restroom, which I haven't measured yet. I've talked to people today. If it will work in there, because that's going to be an issue too, is where this is going to fit. Because, you know, it's a commercial grade washer extractor and it's a commercial grade dryer. So we're still working on trying to figure out where to put it. But uh, that wall knockout, that's probably going to be one thing. It, it might work in that room with the showers and stuff that are already there. It's just something we're going to have to do some measuring and thinking about. Um, the other thing is that this company. Any of the companies I've talked to so far would expect us to have uh, hose bibs in place, a drain, and uh, electrical cutouts for the washer extractor and the dryer, and also uh, the dryer would be a natural gas dryer because they say it's a lot more economical and uh, easier to maintain. So, like I said, I can give you all kinds of stats. You really want to listen to it, but I don't think you do. I spent eight hours in a class and. April on know your smoke and that's the things the trend's going to another thing you be heads up for like I said here's about twelve hundred dollars a set approximately maybe towards the end of next year we might look at writing another grant to get 30 sets a year so that everybody has two sets a year one set a year is what they're using it gets contaminated it goes gets washed it gets dried it gets inspected and they have another set to wear while this other set's getting prepped to be used again. But like I said, you're talking 30 sets a year at $1,200. Suzanne, help me with the math because it's been a long freaking day for me. <laughs> <laughs> and the other issue is, where are we going to keep it? You know, we've, we've had this discussion Monday night at our meeting. You know, I, I tossed out to everybody. Think about where we're going to store this stuff. If we do go to two sets a year, where are we going to store it? You know, keep it maintained and things like this here. So, any questions? It's like I said, I'm bored to death with details. <coughs> no, I just, I thought we had discussed this. No, our budget is just it's set up for equipment and that kind of stuff. I mean, it could all come out of this, but what he's saying is a point. Yeah. No, I, I thought we were all for it. I mean, Mark's brought it up before. It, it, it was, I've talked a little bit to somebody individually when I've had a chance about it, but this this is this is we're down to the guys want to write a grant. They want to write a grant. They don't want to spend they'd love to spend all the taxpayer money if we had more to spend, but we don't. So we'd like to try to write a grant to cover the cost of it. Because we realize, you know, the two projects together is going to be close to eighteen thousand dollars. That's just a rough ballpark because things are going to be a variable because like I said, if we can't set the dryer at a certain temperature. We don't want to go that route because we don't want somebody to put a set of gear in there and ruin it yeah. at $1,200. Yeah, Mark. 
you know, it's, it seems to me, and this, I know it's not citizen's input, but uh, getting the gear for the firemen to me and, and, and the protection for the uh, contaminated air and things like that is a lot more important than tearing down that lousy library. I mean, we're, we're, we're going to spend 50 grand to tear down the library, put that puppy on hold, and look at allocating what we need to do this. If we have to add on to the fire department back behind, we could do that. I mean, we, you could do that. You buy all the gear. You could buy the safety stuff, the, the dryer, extractor, whatever. Washer. Washer, yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, all that could be done for what we're going to spend to the library down. Once we get the library down, then we can turn down both buildings and put up one nice new building. <laughs> well, yeah. And there is grants for that. Keyword is nice. Is the uh, library structurally sound? No, we don't have to worry about walls falling in or falling in the street or anything like that. It is sound. It's just an asbestos problem, isn't it? What's that? We don't the know. Library? We don't know. Okay. Gotcha. I'd say, I, I, I'm, it's not this, I'm not discounting the idea. I just want to make sure that it was at least sound enough that it's not going to fall over or, or cause a problem later. Not today. Nope. Not today. <laughs> it rained outside. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> When it's not raining outside. Yeah, we, even, even if push comes to shove and you took the whole eighteen hundred dollars out of the budget and you had to reappropriate, that could go for I mean that would even be taking or our ten or you're looking at an additional on top of five. Not taking it out of the budget for the whole thing. We're just trying to Yeah. We're just trying to ex extend our budget out a little bit, you know. Like I said, the, the multi gas detectors, uh, we started looking four or five years ago and uh, uh, never really got stuck in the mud on that because of the fact getting bad information about pricing and things and uh, the gentleman from DeMont, well the class I attended in the spring really opened my eyes and the company over there is one of the sponsors of the Know Your Smoke Coalition and uh, he was very pumped up about coming to Argus because he would really like to sell some stuff which that's his job but after the guys sat and listened to him, they realized what importance it is, and it is. Mm -hmm. So, and the washer extractor something, you know, last mm -hmm. three or four months is what I've really been working on that really hard about, and uh, I've uh, reached out to a lot of my friends in the fire service across the state and got some ideas of where to go pricing things. I got some people coming <clears throat> sometime this month that uh, install industrial things and they're going to, and that's one of the things I want to do is this, this is industrial washer extractor and a dryer. Then people come and install it, make sure it works and make sure it works right. And uh, the people I talked to today, they even started naming off the people that I need to be talking to about getting the chemicals from because they'll look at what we're trying to do and pre-mix our chemicals and ship them five gallon pails. All we got to do is put a dipstick into it and drain it out and use it. But we know this guessing it. Do I need a quart of this or a pint of this? It'll all be done for us. They've even sick started getting looking at people like this already. So I think what? We should come the cast. Mark's trying to do is not spin the budget. Well, I understand yeah, what he's trying to do. Yeah. Right. I mean, the, the money's there to go ahead and buy this, the detectors and the other stuff. It's just going to deplete our budget right. for next year. That's what he's trying to get away from. That's what I you know. Like I said, we, 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 we haven't had these things for a lot of years. We've never had these things. You know, we got a washer and dryer over there right now that is a residential washer and dryer. It is very <laughs> detrimental to turnout gear because it's an agitator so we're very select by using it if we do it all and uh, we, we haven't had it for years so to go out and buy it tomorrow is not the idea the idea is to get it funded and get it funded so we save as much as we can to get it done right yeah I'm talking about the gas detectors the gas detectors same way you know we've we've been without those for years 
Uh, EMS, I don't know where Richie said anything or he saw the bill come across, but EMS did buy a, um, CO detectors for their people. There's one each one of the ambulances now that their people can power up. Because you go into a house, and I'm going to talk to Corey more about that part, if you go into a house, somebody down, you don't know why they're down. CO detector might save your life. <coughs> Richie already bought two for his EMS personnel. Um, so we send them in first. So the, and that's exactly right. And the, the understanding is with Richie that we can use those to help us a little bit until we get this other project going along. So he's just looking for nine hundred bucks commitment from the council is five percent on this project. What he's looking for. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> to say you'll back his percent for the grant. I mean, that's how it works. All right, I'll make a I motion that we back it. the uh, Target's fire department's 5% uh, for, the, for the money that they need to buy this equipment, but I'm not saying it correctly. I second. We got a motion and a second to back the Argus fire department. Uh, yeah. The 5%, yeah, and they're gonna write a grant. Cover the other, cover the other five percent. And no, we'll come up. We're going to come up five percent on our own, our fundraising money. Then the grant will be up and beyond. The grant will take care of the rest yeah. of it. Yeah. And then later in the, like I said, I'm, I'm looking at a couple other grants for the turnout gear. If if we do those later on next year, or yeah, 2017, we're going to be looking at that. Some of the, some of the other guys have jumped on board with this, and they're kind of helping me with some of this. So. Um, Moving a little along, some of the little faster. I really wanted to because I'd like to get a little more research, but we're getting there. So, but this one we need to have done by February first. So, okay. All favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Just so people know that the department's fundraiser money has went for their equipment. That grass truck sitting over there was bought by the fire department, not by the town. Okay. Since I've been on the fire department, and I've been on a while years back somebody asked me how much we gave back from fundraisers. And I did the math and it's someplace close to maybe hundred and thirty thousand dollars for fire crew. Good. Alright, thank you Mark. Yep, thank you, thank you guys. Any other little business? And you too ma'am, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm from the old school. Everybody's a guy until the fruit different. <laughs> New business. We're going to table the park board appropriation um, for this meeting. Um, ordinance 2016-14. Holiday, paid holiday for 2017. What did you say? It's been the same since I've been on. Is anything new been added? Is it the same old? It's the same old, same old. I just questioned Friday, December 22nd. Well, it was Christmas Eve has always been our holiday, so that was, it's actually a Saturday and a Sunday, is that correct? So it's Friday <coughs> before and the Monday after. No, Christmas is on oh. Monday. Next year, Christmas is on Monday. So yeah, next year. Oh, so it's Sunday and Monday. So instead of having Monday and Tuesday off, which would be our two holidays, we went Friday and Monday, or Friday and Tuesday. Otherwise, we would have had Monday, Tuesday. Yeah, it would have been like four days. So you're taking Friday and Monday instead of Monday, Tuesday. Instead of Monday, Tuesday. Instead of Monday, Tuesday. Just like this year, Christmas is on Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're taking a Friday and a Monday. So we're taking a Friday and a yeah. Monday this year. I'm used to working for myself. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas Eve is Christmas Eve. Christmas Day is Christmas Day. So. I see what you're saying. But, you know, if you days do. off during the week, just. Well, it just depends. Like, because it falls on a Saturday and Sunday. Is that what you're saying? Right. But if Christmas is on Monday, you get Christmas Day off. If 
you don't get the Friday before, but Christmas Eve, and Christmas Eve is technically Sunday. I mean, I'm okay with it, but like I say, I'm just used to That's it. the way it works where I work. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm used to the self-employed mentality. You know, the extra days on it, just the kind of extra day. Happens that way, but. I'll, I'll make a motion to pass ordinance 2016-14 as we've written. I second that. Got a motion and a second to pass ordinance 2016-14. Any further discussion? I have the same. I, I, I feel the same she does right. in the same aspect, but it's been this way for <clears throat> yeah. since I've been on it 10 years and it hasn't been killing anything, so there's no reason to right. fight over this. Yeah. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Christmas light decoration contest. Are we going to do it for the businesses and the, uh, the residents? Whatever we did last year. Yeah. Let's do the same thing we did last year. Forget the best of us that's been going for the past 13 years. <laughs> um, what is what is the contest can <coughs> consist of and what do you grade it on and who's the winner and is you yeah, put yeah. up your Christmas decorations, the pilot news if they're so willing to do it again this year drives around, does the judging and they they tell us who to give the money to. Okay. And you do it between now and Christmas, so it would be done between now and the next meeting, two weeks. If that's okay with you, Jim, he's up for it. <laughs> I'll make a motion we do the Christmas light decorations as we did last year. Same prizes. Second. We motion a second to the Christmas light decorating contest. Same as last year with the businesses and the homes and the same prices. All in favor say aye. 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 All right, ordinance 2016-15, salary ordinance adjustment. Here we go, we just need to pass it. Thank you, motion we pass uh, ordinance 2016-15 with changes. Second. Got a motion and a second to two. Pass ordinance. 2016-15 with the changes. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Is that the first reading? Oh. Uh, no. Yeah. I'll do it again. We'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion we suspend the rules and pass ordinance 2016-15 on all three readings. Thank you. <laughs> so used to automatically doing that. I second. Got a motion and a, okay. a, motion and a second to suspend the rules and pass ordinance 2016-15 on all three readings. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. <laughs> all three readings. <laughs> all right. Ordinance 2016-16, we're tabling. So we got to do your evaluation. That should be easy. Employee Handbook 2017. We went through the handbook tonight. Do we want to pass it as the uh, Changes for the one we just bring for the next meeting. We're all in agreement with the changes. Yeah. To get it done. Get it done. Let's get it done. I move we approve the handbook with the changes that we suggested tonight. I'll second that. Got a motion and a second <laughs> to approve the employee handbook for the town of Argus with the changes that we made tonight. For 2017. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Reach alert. Just need to say window or not. 
we've talked about it before, and we talked about it again a little bit tonight. I forget, was this an automatic, if we do it for one year, we have to go the two years? No, you do not have to go the two years. If you try it for one year and you don't like it, you can cancel. The um, gentleman that I spoke to today he told me it would take about 15 minutes to set it up and train us how to do it. And then the citizens have to sign up for it, and they have to... Um, they're allowed four phone numbers and four email addresses. You weren't here when we were kind of discussing it, so. Per household, um, anybody would be able to sign up for it. It wouldn't just be for the town. It would also be for anybody in the 46501 zip code. Um, How will we notify people that they can not sign up? Well, and he's going to provide me with a letter that we could send out to everybody, or and I can also put it on Facebook, our town website. You know what I mean? And um, you can make as many network admins as you want. So you could all be network admins. So you could add whatever you wanted to them. You can make private groups. So like Jamie could make him and all the employees a group. You could make the town council a group. You can also contact individual households, tell them that you know this is their last day to pay their electric bill before they're shut off. Um, and there's no limit to how many messages. It's good. It's reasonable, I think. I mean, a year, you're gonna know I'll make a motion we go with uh, reach outward for one year for trial basis. I'm going to put this. How do you want to do that? It, it would have to probably be the town doing it because we, there's no way that we can fill the people outside of town. Yeah. Right. It would have to be like kind of a kind of our advertising. Yeah. I second. <clears throat> the motion is second to move on and continue with regional alert. Continue. Start using regional alert. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And he did say that he would um, he'd start it tomorrow, but our contract would actually not start until January 1st, so we'd get like a few weeks <coughs> We can do the letter, yes. We will send the letter. Um, now, I don't know that we have every address, but we can maybe do a full postcard. Remember, we talked about doing that for NACOG. Um, a full post postcard to anybody in the 4651 zip code. Because a lot of those we want to reach would not make not have right. technology. Right. Right. The older people. Yeah, exactly. Any other new business? Moving on, claims, 1353 through 1480. Hey, I did add the EMS pay, the fire pay, police commission pay, and park board pay to this tonight, so I finally got everybody done. Um, the total docket is $388,851.50. The top five claims are, number one is IMPA for $140,970.82. Number two is payroll number 23 for $32,844.87. Payroll number 24 for $30,460.89. <coughs> Tracy Thayer Construction for $13,770.02. Republic Services at $11,930.77. The total of the top five claims is $229,977.37, and it represents 59% of the total docket. Twice. <coughs> she 
she was not paid twice. The one I voided. Um, I don't know why I did this. When I did her check the first time, it, it said Nicole Stevens, but the check actually wrote Aid Corporation, and it had um, a different address. And when I looked it up in Fund Accounting, somebody had changed the. Um, when I look it up, I look it up by her name. So they had changed everything under her name to a corporation and a different address. So I had to void that check and then I had to redo another check. So and what's wrong with that check, check was voided. 1365. That's the oh, that's just an employee perf. Mm -hmm. um, it was a line item that was zero. Oh, okay. The fund, the rest of it is 1365 also if you look at the other numbers. Yeah. Normally I don't put the zeros in there, but I probably was like, okay, I'll just. I can bring in the correction if you want, Suzanne. <laughs> if you look at the stipend, you notice the difference because the part will pay for reading, not just one right. set bill. Yeah. It's a big difference. That's it. Oh, yeah. Just to the was bought the Except claims 1353 through 1480 in the amount of three hundred and eighty-eight thousand eight hundred and fifty-one dollars and fifty cents. Second. <coughs> motion is second to accept claims thirteen fifty-three through fourteen eighty in the amount of three hundred and eighty-eight thousand dollars, three hundred and eighty-eight thousand eight hundred and fifty-one dollars and fifty cents. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Meeting to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. Make a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.